In this video, I'll give a brief explanation on what the circadian rhythm is and what it does. This video is going to be the first one in a series surrounding the dark period, so if you're interested in getting more essential information about how to stay healthy on a polyphasic sleep schedule, I'd suggest you subscribe so you don't miss out when the new videos are released. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower. I'm a main author of Polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. I am also the server owner of the Polyphasic Discord and I'm a moderator on the r slash polyphasic subreddit. So let's get into the video. The circadian rhythm, also sometimes referred to as the body clock, is a 24 hour rhythm aligned to the local sunrise and sunset times. Uh, primarily by light exposure, feeding times, temperature and other things. The circadian rhythm consists of hormonal balances which are altered through the course of the day in order to optimize per processes in the body. Uh, these include the regulation of melatonin which is important for SWS and also dictates the timing of the REM peak. Uh, other hormones that are produced are testosterone, human growth hormone, prolactin, cortisol, insulin and so on. <laughs> it's pretty crazy to think that so many hormones are released at certain times of the biological day. Uh, but let's focus on the one that's most important for us polyphasic sleepers, namely melatonin. Melatonin levels rise at dusk, signaling that sleep should be initiated. Um, the high melatonin levels also lead to the first two sleep cycles containing a large percentage of slow wave sleep and less REM compared to later cycles in the day. External cues, like light, especially between the wavelengths of 400 and 530 nanometers, or in other words, blue and green light, uh, food, temperature and exercising can influence the circadian rhythm. Nowadays, most people have their circadian rhythms pushed later because of artificial lighting from electronic devices, uh, which leads to an improper amount of melatonin to build up and can lead to sleep-related issues. These effects can be mostly negated by filtering the light uh, or restricting the usage of electronic device or artificial lighting within two hours before falling asleep. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in a future video. Moving the circadian rhythm on purpose later is also possible but should be done with care because the circadian rhythm is a complex hormonal regulatory process um, and how to shift the circadian rhythm is also going to be discussed in more detail in a later video in this series. But see, here's the important thing that I feel like it's necessary to tell you about. The circadian rhythm can be compared to the daily life of a dog. Uh, I don't know if you have owned dogs, my family used to own two golden retrievers and we used to feed them twice a day uh, and take them out for a walk after that. So after some time they got used to the feeding times and started waiting by their bowls a few minutes before they were supposed to be fed. Um, if we feed them earlier they would be pretty confused but they would still want to go out for a walk immediately after that. And that's how I want you to visualize the circadian rhythm. Um, in, if you give it the same inputs, it won't be confused and everything will be fine. But if you start messing with the inputs, uh, it's going to be sort of confused and shift. But the structure of it or architecture of it will still be the same. So a dog will still want to go out immediately after being fed, even though it's fed earlier. So the circadian rhythm is like a very complex clock that's both affected by the surroundings and demands them to be constant in order to be stable itself. So what happens if you start disrupting your circadian rhythm too much is that it starts affecting your body in a really negative way. Um, some side effects from having a destabilized circadian rhythm include the development of obesity, diabetes and even cardiovascular diseases. So you definitely want to avoid disrupting your circadian rhythm too much. It's been shown in research surrounding desynchronization schedules or schedules with significantly shorter sleep wake types like for example uh, sleeping one hour every three hours that the length of the circadian rhythm doesn't really change. When you're on a shortened sleep-wake schedule, the circadian rhythm will still keep being 
around 24 hours long. It won't shorten to like 4 hours. Um, what this means more specifically is that if you introduce light later in the day uh, and keep waking up early, immediately exposing yourself to more light, you're in a risk zone of developing some nasty diseases. But don't worry, we have ways to avoid that and we'll talk about them more in coming videos. Okay, that's all for today. In the comments below, please tell me if you think your circadian rhythm is pushed later in the day by having your phone open too late, uh, and if you would like to know how to avoid that from happening. In the next video, we'll start talking about the dark period and how it's necessary to develop an artificial one when you're sleeping in a polyphasic schedule. Stay tuned for that, and remember to have pleasant naps, people! Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via Ask Your Ko-fi pages. This helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.